All right. I've received a request to update the UI a bit. And the only thing that we are really using UI for right now, spot right here where it says cherries, we are using UI. Otherwise, we, we are very clean. It's just pure gameplay otherwise. We are going to use Mario as a good example. You see in the Mario world, they have a very clean looking UI. It's just straight up pictures and these like uh, these text looking numbers that have like that uh, gradient on them. You see like it's darker at the bottom and lighter at the top, giving it an almost like a metallic feel. They have that really dark outline on it, giving it this nice uh, this nice look that that works across multiple uh, backgrounds. So like right here, for instance, if it goes where this cloud's at, that black outline will actually make it so that you can still see those numbers. But if you go into a, uh, a darker background, uh, the light middle will actually still stick out. It's a very useful system. Now, as you already know, Mario is the quintessential platforming game, meaning that it is the top of the line. It's what sets the standard. And so, so if we base our system off of them, I believe that we are doing a fairly good job. So going back into Unity, I believe that there's two main principles behind the Mario UI. One, they use a, uh, a picture for the cherry. So we'll start with that. So if you go to your UI itself, hit F. After you select it over here on the left side, you can hit F and it will focus in on it. Now you see over here where it says cherries, we're going to actually end up deleting that. We don't need a little text there anymore. And then we're going to create a new UI object. It is going to be a image. We're going to drag it over to over here on the top left. And we are going to actually anchor it where you see this picture underneath rec transform. You hit this little picture right here and it'll, this will allow for you to mess with the anchor presets. Now over here in the middle it creates the uh, multiple of the presets. So you don't just mess with the whether it's on the left or the right or the top and the bottom. You actually mess with where it is completely. So right here if we click this top left corner it will always base where this picture is at, this sprite is at based on this top left corner. So if the screen shrinks, it'll be the same distance from the top left corner. If the resolution changes, still the same distance from the top left uh, corner of the screen. Okay. And you'll even see the numbers over here on the screen where it shows it's uh, 102 pixels down and 136 pixels from the left. All right. So now we're going to want to get the image to be the image that we want. I want it to look like the cherry. So if we go into Sunnyland, artwork, sprites, and we want to go into items, cherry, and then you can just drag any of these cherry pictures over to it. Make sure that you have your image selected. You pick a cherry and you just drag it right on over to get the look that you want. Now, I actually don't want this number either. Now the problem with this is that we want the, uh, that we are currently manipulating this through script. So let's see how it looks first and we'll work from there. Let's get the sizing about right. You can line it up and you see how the, these lines on the outside of the cherry image are lighting up as we get these, get the sizing lined up with it. Now we can change how the alignment of this text is working. So if we go, for instance, to center, and then we go to center again, we can end up with a completely different look. We up the size and we end up with something like that, right? So let's just hit play. We're eventually going to get rid of this, but for now we'll work with it. And it's very, very large, but it'll work for now. It's, now it's almost so large that, it's, that it looks weird. So what I'm going to do, shrink this down a bit, I'm going to move this over to the left. I definitely want it to be thinner and shrunk down a bit as well. And we'll shrink down the size so it makes a little bit more sense. We'll try it again to see if we got the correct look. It's looking a lot better already. I still want it a little bit more to the left. Actually, I find that Mario system where they, they have an X there. 
looks pretty good and I want it almost right on there. Shrink it down even a bit more. Get it so that it looks pretty decent. It's not going to change anymore. We don't want it to change anymore and I'm going to actually change the script so that it looks a little bit better. It's going to shrink it down a little bit more. It just looks a little weird with the leaf blocking part of it. I'm going to go down to a normal size here. There we go. I think that's about what we want. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click player UI and we are going to go to UI again. We're going to go text mesh pro. We're going to import the TMP essentials, text mesh pro essentials. Now this is how we're going to create a similar effect to that uh, gradient text, right? So we don't need any of that. We don't need any extra example. Now, after moving it to about where we want it, we're going to resize the text to about the right size. And we're going to line it up how we want it with alignment. We're going to give it an outline like we saw inside of the other system. But first we're going to change the text so that we have a realistic view of what we're going to be seeing inside the game. And actually we're going to align it on the left so that it grows in that direction as it gets larger. Now we want the font size to be a little bit bigger. You know, way too small of a case. So let's do like 42 maybe. Maybe even a bit bigger like 46. That looks a little bit better. Let's give it a little bit of an outline here. Enable it. Make it thicker. We want it to be bold. We want to turn on a color gradient. Of course, the top I find to be better as a white anyway, so we can leave the top left and top right as both a white. But on the bottom left and the bottom right, we're going to want to set up a little bit of a pink color, like so. If you grab this eyedropper right here, you can just click it, the same color right there and you end up with that gradient right there. Now we're going to dilate it a bit to create a bigger, thicker text mesh there. We hit the play button and we're looking pretty good except for I forgot to anchor it. So there you see the importance of anchoring. On our screen it looks right because it's anchored from the center. It's always the same distance from the center of the screen rather than the top left of the screen. So to make it uh, look a little bit better here, we are going to take this button right here and we're going to hit the top left. And now we hit play and we should have the look that we want. All right? Now I'm thinking the pink might even be sticking out a little bit too much. And instead of doing it that way, maybe we'll just take the color of the cherry itself. So if we go over here, we hit this eyedropper and we go click on the cherry. And then we hit the eyedropper and we click on the other one right there. We'll end up with a better effect like so. All right. Now, of course, the X is still the object that we're changing the text on. So let's go ahead and fix that inside of script. So if we click on our player and we go back down to player controller, we double click it, it'll open up Visual Studio once more. So as a refresher, we are actually updating the cherry count all within this uh, on trigger enter down here inside of the uh, player script. So if you check out this cherry text dot text cherry, and then you set it equal to cherries dot two string, which is this, uh, variable right here. It's just a number that goes up every time that we destroy a cherry by running into it with our face. So the thing is right now that we're using this text object, which is inside of unity.ui, text mesh pro is not inside of there. So we actually need to go TM pro and use that instead. So you hit using TM pro. All right. Up here in the top. This will give us access to the text mesh pro object instead. And instead of this uh, text object, we're going to actually be changing this over to 
text mesh pro u GUI. Now this UGUI is the newer Unity uh, GUI system that was introduced, I believe in 4.6 or so. It was a uh, big deal when it came out, but now it's standard. <laughs> and uh, But still, they TextMesh Pro has been around for long enough where they uh, have an they still have the scripts for the older system. Now, text mesh, uh, so cherry text should still work because it's still the same, uh, they still use the same sub. The string is still called text inside of it, so it should still work. So if we save that, and now instead of having the incorrect text object attached to cherry text, it won't work anymore. As you saw, it just became none on here because it updated and it's like, okay, that doesn't match. Now, if we text, take this text mesh pro object, and I'm gonna actually rename that to cherry count. I'm gonna rename this to X, and I'm gonna rename this to cherry picture. That should do it. So now we have that all set up. It should now work. And there you go. We have an updated GUI that looks both better and feels a lot better. Might even want it a little bit more in the top left, but you get the picture. That's that's the main point. You might want to pick more of a pixel font for it, but it is what it is. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, feel free to request more things that you might have noticed throughout the uh, whole game making process, because Maybe you guys see things that you want changed and want to learn that's different from what I thought was important when I was making this. This just came about because somebody requested an updated uh, GUI. Um, yeah, so let me know if you want to learn something else that uh, pertains to the series or if you want a completely different series altogether because I am working on a new one now. Well, at least I'm in the I'm in the testing phase of messing with a top-down action RPG, uh, kind of Zelda-like. If you want that or you want something else, let me know. I'm willing to test out and try a whole bunch of different things. I'm maybe even thinking of doing a third-person controller series where we make a uh, make some pretty advanced features inside of a third-person controller like IK and stuff like that, and I thought that might be fun. So that we can make a system that's kind of like, I guess we can start like testing out systems that's almost Assassin's Creed like. But I like more of a Dark Souls combat system, so maybe, I don't know, I haven't played the newer Assassin's Creed, so I'd have to go try one out if I was going to do that combat system. I think that's just of it. I hope that you liked the video. Please hit the like video below and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you can know when I am making more tutorial videos. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.